Hello everyone and welcome back to Pine Hollow Quilts and our year-long videos of using your scraps, using what you have, using the tools that you have. Today we have one that I'm calling pixelated minis and they're going to be really good. For using up those small pieces in your stash, we're cutting one and a half inch squares. I know that sounds really, really tiny, but they're just small wall hangings in there to use the smaller squares. So um, today we're outside. You may hear a little bit of background noise because I don't necessarily need to do any sewing today, but I am going to show you what I've come up with. And I encourage you to do the same. You just get some graph paper and um, start playing around. It's not hard. They're pixelated, so you deal with squares. Um, what I'm going to show you right now is the patriotic one. It's made up of just blues, different reds, and I use light creams instead of white. And um, it's not quilted yet, but it's gonna be quilted and have a hanger on it so I can put it up for the holidays. Um, if you notice there are no stars on this, that is the one thing that you are free to, to use your imagination for. You can applique stars on it. You can quilt stars on it. You can embroider stars on it. Yes, my dog is out here wondering why I'm talking to you all. Um, but yeah, this has so many possibilities. Um, one thing I will caution you, please, you may not want to use the web um, stitching that I've showed you in previous videos to do the piecing of your top. These pieces are really tiny when you start to, trying to do web stitching and get all those pieces under your machine. Yeah, I did web stitching. It can be done. You'd be better off doing these two rows at a time and then stitching the rows together. But anyway, let's get started. I'll show you what I use. And then I'm going to show you some of the designs I've come up with. And I encourage you to definitely um, do some of your own. Get some graph paper and see what you can do. I have gridded paper. And it is more than likely going to be backwards in my video but it's gridded paper it's four by four and it's a big sheet the sheets are 17 by 22 um, and each gridded square the the dark lines on the inside are one inch and they're um, four to the inch so they're in quarter inches so it's very easy to use this grid paper. I use it for a lot of things. So let's get started and I'll show you the, the brain power behind these. Okay, <clears throat> here we have the, um, the gridded paper that I used for the flag. I know you can't see it with pencil because that's how I do things. I do it with pencil so that I can erase, but I'm going to highlight everything that I did with marker so that you can see. Um, first of all, I know that this is only, um, 21 I believe 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 okay I've got 24 22 usable squares I want to make this 24 because I want to divide it my star section is going to be 8 and my stripe section is going to be 16 just because it's easier math so I come down 8 that's just an arbitrary number in my mind. I know there are 13 stripes across the flag. So right now the 13 is what's defining how wide I make this particular design. So these are gonna all be my blue squares. And then I'm going to take it down to the 16, but because I don't have enough space, I have a little note down here to myself that says add two rows. So I just know to do that. And I'm going to finish squaring it off over here so that I know where my um, outside edges are. And then to differentiate, I'm going to go ahead and use this, a different color on the inside, just so you can see it. Do I, I don't normally use a ruler to do this. I just go slow with a pencil. That's why I use a pencil so that I can erase where I need to. Um, so yeah, I'm not really too worried about the lines. Now remember, you can see the squares on here. These are one inch squares. So when you cut, remember to add your half inch seam allowance 
to get your one and a half inch squares. Like I said, I'm not too worried. This is just for me, for you. Um, you know, it, it's just to get an eyeball of what I need to do. And like I said, when I did it, um, for me to figure this out to begin with, it's in pencil anyway. So then I can erase. So to get my appropriate number of stripes, we have the reds here, white cream here, red, white cream. And yes, I went through and did this on every row just so I could figure out what I had to make sure I had it accurate. Um, because the one thing you don't want to do is get to the end and miscount and you have to do another row. And then once I did all of this labeling, um, I went back in and counted. So I knew how many I had to cut. So for the reds, there are 112 total red squares on all of these stripes. For the creams, there are 96. And for the blues, there are 104. So that's how many squares you need. Yes, that sounds like a god-awful amount. It's not. Are they tiny? Yeah, but you know what? You can get this completed in an afternoon after you get the pieces cut. You just sit there and stitch. And like I said, um, you can do this totally random. Mine, however, is not quite totally random. I'll show it here again. Um, because I don't do totally random. That, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> I have a little bit of obsessive compulsive behavior, but I have uh, four different blues, one, two, three, four, and then I just scattered them however I wanted to do it. And for my reds, I also have four different reds, one, two, three, four. And um, I tried to make sure I didn't have the same one touching in any column or any row. My creams, I had three and I alternated them. So if you look, I've got um, diagonal rows on my creams so there it's scrappy but it's controlled scrappy and that's how I do scrappy um, but when I'm going when you go to start putting yours together I would advise to do this first row of blue and red 8 blue and 16 red do another row of 8 blue 16 white cream and then join those two rows together. Do two more rows of strips and then join this, these two rows together and then you can join this section to this section. That is how I would build this quilt if I was going to make it again. Like I said, the web piecing just was not um, conducive to these little squares. Let's go on to another one that I have um, come up with. And I'll show you just some of the things that I've played with and that's all it is is playing with it so that you can get an idea of some things that you might want to do for your own quilts. Here we have a flower box. Now it really doesn't look like a flower box to you at this point in time, but I'm going to go ahead and draw the outline of what I have. This is going to be my bottom. And for some reason on here, I have a note to add one row to each side to make it 24. Right now, as it stands, it's 22. I don't know if I necessarily want to add that extra row or not once I come back and look at it the second time. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think I just wanted to give myself some extra space. So there is my complete size. It is 12, currently by 22. I have a note to add a row to each side, so you know, maybe it'll be 12 by 24 just because everything else is 24 and I liked it that way. I don't know. Um, I also have another row in here. And what this is going to be is your flower box. So this section of 3 by 22 or 24, I have it green um, or a colored container. Okay, so it could be green for your grass, or you could do whatever you, you could make this fancy for a colored container. You could do a, a border print in here that is three and a half inches wide by 22. You don't even have to do the one inch squares. 
to make that easier if you're going to do a border print or some kind of fancy print in here and you still want to get the illusion of the pixelation just continue quilting it at the one inch marks from up here and you'll have the seams that will help you keep those in line so that'll be an easy way to get that um, and then up on the top for the flowers let me grab an orange here excuse my arm um, these are the flowers that I have and they're just four patch flowers basically but remember it's all pixelated so it's all squares no rounded corners no half square triangles you know none of the crazy stuff just really simple really easy not meant to be a hard project not meant to um, confuse your brain just something a little fun thing to do okay if you notice my flowers are not gonna have any stems and that's fine because if I gave them stems If I gave my flower stems, the stems in my mind would have to go up the flower centers and that would cut in between two blocks and that would cause me heartache. Yeah, I'm not going to think that hard. So what I can do is I can take um, little thin pieces of green and applique them up for my stems on each one of them. You can applique some leaves on there. You can applique a little center on your flowers if you like. Or if you don't like applique like me. I don't like applique. I could do some thread painting and do some thread painting of stems and leaves in here. Either way, you know, it's going to look fine. Have some fun with it. Um, everything that's white here that's not colored in is going to be your background. So, you know, have a nice sky fabric you want to cut up or have some blues for your sky. Cut them all up and pixelate them and put them in here. I did not do this one. So uh, the flag was actually the only one I actually cut out and finished. Um, for this one, I have 72 green. I have 188 of the background. And I've got 28 for the flowers. Like I said, I have it on here to add another row on each side. I don't know why, because there's one row in between each of the flowers and one row on the end. So maybe I wanted some extra space. I'm not sure. but. There's this one. I've got two more to show you. Okay, this one is a cloud and rainbow, and I really like this one. No, it is not anything pride related. God gave us rainbows. I like rainbows, um, but it's a it's a cloud, and I'll show you the the outline the the. Um, my borderline, that's what I want to call it. And again, I have a note at the bottom of this page to add two rows, just because I want to make it longer. And um, yeah, that's just why, because I wanted to make it longer. For some odd reason, I like 24 and this is only 22. Okay, so there is my, um, my borderline. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 across the top and 24 down. That's why I do it. I like to keep the symmetry. Now I can think. Um, so because clouds are puffy, kind of, I did a, a kind of a jagged edge on my clouds. Remember, this is all pixelated, so you don't have to worry about smooth lines, um, corners, half square triangles. Yeah, you, you, no, it's pixelated. Think of Mario. Okay, I know your kids have played Mario or you've played Mario. Yeah, we're doing pixelation. So this is the whites for my cloud. And there are um, 84 of those. And then I went too wide this time to do my color strips just because I wanted them a little wider. So these are my reds. Remember, this is totally, completely scrappy. You can put as many reds or oranges in here that you want. This is an orange. These are the yellows. But they come right down from the, the cloud after it's just rained. Like I said, these are too wide. Blues. And then the purples here on the end. 
Okay, so for the total, I have 35 red. I have 33 orange, and that's because of this little offset up here. The yellows, I have 33. Green, I have 35. Blues, I have 33. And purple, I have 35. Um, the one thing I have a note on over here at the side is one of the things that you can do, like um, the flag, I said you could add the stars, and then um, the flower pots, I said to go ahead and add leaves and stems. Well, this one, add some raindrops in there. Applique, quilt, however you want to do it, put some big raindrops in here. They're just simple teardrops, and if you get really creative on the bottom, hang a couple off the bottom to look like it's raining. Um, and that's just something else I came up with. And the last one is going to be a slice of watermelon. So let's look at the watermelon. Okay, here is the watermelon slice. Now I don't have any notes on here to myself to expand it one direction or the other. Um, so I guess I kind of liked whatever I did. It's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's 13 wide by the 22 long. So I'll go ahead and draw the, the border of this so that you can see what I'm talking about. And again, this is a watermelon slice. These are all fun, quick little wall hangings, door hangers, however you want to use them. For the summer to change out you can easily do holiday ones pixelated holiday ones they would be really cute do one with hearts um, hearts would be a little harder to do but you know they're pixelated they're supposed to be fun okay so anyway there are my borders um, that's the main part of the watermelon and then switching it up so you can see it a little better so yes, I truly have three layers of watermelon here. These down here are my greens. These are my whites. And these are the reds slash pinks. Um, there's 192 of these. 24 white and 52 green. This is a very easy one also, you know, very simple. Um, along the same lines of the, the flag with its simplicity. No, not a whole lot of planning on here, just mixing up your colors. Um, how will you know it's a watermelon slice? Well, like the cloud, and watermelon seeds are very similar in shape to raindrops. Do black seeds. Or um, if you're into beading, do a little grouping of, of beading here for um, the seeds in your watermelons. Applique the black on. You know, however you want to get your, your black seeds on there to, to make it look cute. And um, that's about all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my selection of um, these cute little pixelated wall hangings. I hope you get some graph paper and decide that, yes, I can do that too. Because you can. You really can. Um, and it, you don't have to have any artistic skill. If you can draw a semi-straight line, if you can follow a line, you're good. You can do this. Um, one that would be really cute would be flip-flops. Now, yes, I know flip-flops are round, but this is pixelated, so you do rectangular flip-flops. You know, those would be really cute. Um, yeah, so shoot me a line, tag me on um, Facebook, or you can um, put a comment down here at the bottom. Show me some of your designs that you've come up with. Don't forget to subscribe, and um, we'll be back in uh, a little while and the next one I think is going to be Dresden plates so you may or may not have a ruler yeah that's okay we can do with it all right till later thank you bye bye